Okay. We're putting down rust bullet, the concrete version. It's under there. We stirred it for three minutes and eight seconds, uh, trying to go very slow so you don't get too much air in it, really get no air in it. Uh, it comes up, it's still a little swirly on the top. They said that's normal. We're cutting in now, obviously not too fastidiously. Uh, the floor's been drying. We've been running fans in here and dehumidifiers to try and get as bone dry as possible. The only area that's of challenge is this. This has had a turbo heater going on it for two days straight. So as far as I'm concerned, this is as dry as it's getting. If we put acetone on it, the surface gets momentarily dry, but then gets a little damp again. So it's as good as it's getting. If it peels, that'll be where I put a cabinet. The rest of the floor is dry. That's a little patches of cracks, but all the cracks are about, for comparison, here's a small roller. So the cracks are very hairline. These are not dampness, but stains. And that probably is dampness. Though after two days of just heater, 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 and about eight fans in here, this is as good as it gets. Okay, we're putting down Rust Bullet, the concrete version. I got a feeling it's the same stuff, but anyway. We've cleaned the floor, prepped the floor, we're doing a first coat. So first thing, trying to open the can was a pain in the ass. And I don't know. I usually don't open those cans, but I'm not a small guy. It still took me forever to get the can open. I don't think it's an issue having the right tool. The top's completely deformed now, so there's an issue. But anyway, once the can's open, stir for three minutes. They say don't go more, don't go less. Try not to get any air in it. That's a biggie, so I went slow, didn't get any air in it. Use the mixing tool. So now the way we've been doing it is four foot sections at a time. And we're basically doing ribbons across the back. So four foot by four, four by four, four by four, working our way across the back and doing the next one. You can kind of see the lines where we're doing the rows. Um, here's what we found. I only looked back and realized it about one, two, three, four, five rows into it. I was back rollering this way. So after you get a bunch down, you, you know, as far as the pole can reach, you lightly go back, back, back. And that's great. But I should have also been back rolling a little bit across the seam or the joint. It's a wet edge, and that's why I'm rushing through this video to keep this edge somewhat wet. But you can still see those lines. It's still the first coat, so I'm expecting a little bit of roller lines. Uh, and I'm also expecting a little bit of that blotchiness because the surface isn't 100% consistent. We did etch it. We power washed it. We did a boatload of stuff. Uh, I did not grind it. I didn't grind it anywhere. It's loaded with stains and marks, rust stains, paint marks. The paint is pretty amazing. It goes down very well. It's not that thick, gloppy paint that you'd usually get for concrete, like from a Home Depot or something like that. It's much thinner, so it goes down easier. It covers anything, any spot that's on here. We had yellow traffic paint, uh, rust marks, anything that's on here is covering just fine. Uh, it's getting nice down into the little grooves and nooks. It is not a flat surface at all, and it's still doing a great job of getting in there. So uh, it goes down well. And that's it for now. I'll come back again when we're doing the second coat. Okay, update on the second coat. First coat took an hour and 45 minutes to put down. The second coat took an hour. The garage is 32 by 24, so I don't know, what's that, six, 700 square? Uh, I've pretty much smoked through five gallons. There's about a quart left out of five gallons on two coats. So this floor was etched, and in some places, like there, etched pretty heavily. Uh, the etching won't really clean off grease, but uh, when there's grease that you've tried everything else to get up, if you keep throwing muriatic acid on it, uh, grease starts to appear in the foam that's coming up, so some grease is getting lifted. Uh, I think it's at the expense of the concrete. But say la vie. This was the spot that actually had tar on it originally. We tried everything to clean it, short of setting it on fire. So second coat goes down much faster, uh, much easier to do because it's not absorbing as quickly, and obviously the material goes a lot further. We had used about half the five-gallon container on the first round, uh, we used less on the second. And a lot of the brush marks are now gone, or the roller marks, we'll say. 
So it's starting to appear more uniform. The floor itself isn't exactly smooth, so that's an issue. And that's it. It took uh, two and a half hours for it to dry first round. Humidity here is about 50%, just hovering around 50%, and temperatures in the very low 80s. So uh, one more coat, hopefully, in about two hours. Things to know, we used uh, Wooster rollers, 3.8 nap. I didn't think that would be good enough, especially considering the floor, as you can see, has a lot of like divots and stuff in it. However, uh, the material goes into it fine. There's no need to really go back too much with a brush, even into areas like this. The material goes down into it fine. And that's the story. I'll come back with the third coat. Oh, one tidbit. That's a fan that I'll occasionally run. I don't know if it's doing any good. Um, this thing. This is worth the investment. This is a Harbor Freight. Kind of a portable garage. We needed a place to put all the stuff that was in the garage while we painted it. Uh, this thing is about $170 with a coupon or $200 on sale. It's from Harbor Freight. It's actually pretty well made. Well, well enough for the job. And far cheaper than a getting a pot or anything like that. That's it. Okay. Coat number three. Uh, down and done. The first two coats, we went from left to right, doing like a four-foot wide swath. Four foot, four foot, four foot wide. And then we'd start back there and do another four foot, four foot to try and grab the oldest wet edge. Uh, so we did the first two coats left to right. Last coat I did front to back to hopefully catch any spots that got missed along the way. Uh, first coat took an hour and 45 to put down. Second coat took an hour to put down. Third coat took uh, 45 minutes to put down. Uh, some things to know. A uh, respirator, you must get a respirator. Even in this area, because this is pretty open, it's pretty open period and pretty high up, uh, still, it starts to get overwhelming, especially to the back of the garage. So uh, a respirator with uh, uh, not just a little bullcrap dust filter, splurge for real filters. The mask itself will be about 20 bucks for a good one, 15 for one that's not as comfortable, and then the filters are like 20 bucks. So that's a must get. Uh, three coats in. You can tell the brush marks are pretty much gone. Roller marks, it's starting to get more of a shine to it. It's actually still wet, so that's not 100% of the shine you'll see. Sorry about that. There's that left and most of five gallons. That's most. It's probably about four, three to four gallons in there. Uh, last minute things. <sighs> what else to know about it? Take the edges there, that's helpful. Oh, my garage actually comes down there. That'll be outside the garage. Uh, after calling to find out what to do about that, I was told, you shouldn't have done that. You should have made the cutoff line inside. Uh, too late. They recommended cutting my losses and only putting one coat. Uh, I kind of disregarded that and put three on it anyway, and I have high hopes. <sighs> The edges, in my case, I don't have to worry about too much. I did tape a couple of the columns because it's actually a pole barn. Uh, so that's the story. Three coats, uh, Worcester 3 8 snap roller, uh, cut in first coat. I didn't cut in the other two coats. Uh, make sure you stir the gallon. Oh, something to check. Here's the, the sorry for the movement. It's for a five gallon, and since I got a five gallon pail, that worked out well. However, something to check, which I didn't. Uh, this was an Amazon buy, and I got it, and it was supposed to fit in a half inch chuck. It did not. So I had to grind it down to make it fit. That's something you want to check before you start the project. Uh, other things I'm going to need. There's the actual. Uh, rollers I used. This is another respirator we used. And these are just regular dust filters. Don't use these. You'll still get a vicious headache. Oh, it's a clean acetone. It did the job. And I kept a little 
coffee can with the acetone there to clean that out. And that's about it. Comments, questions? All in all, a uh, decent project. We'll see how well it holds up. Well, also kind of an expensive project. Uh, the paint itself is pricey. Uh, to be accurate, I probably went through almost the exact amount of paint they predicted, so that's, that's pretty impressive. The garage is a definite uh, get. That's helpful. And we went by with one tray and one roller. Last look around. That's a drain in the middle. And I came right out to the edge. Okay, it's been 72 hours. I'm supposed to let it cure for 72 hours. I emailed to ask if the humidity made a difference because we've had rain here. So supposedly the humidity makes a cure, but it seems to have no effect. The lock was, wait, 72 hours. So we wait 72 hours. Uh, I'm not too fastidious here because I'm actually going to paint those. Uh, brush marks. There are still roller marks. Oh, good, there's good light to make it out of. Not sure what to chalk that up to. We went twice left to right, and the third time we went front to back, hoping to like cover any marks. I would chalk it up to me starving the roller, but I tried my best not to do that. The roller will start to make a noise if you're starving it. It'll, it sounds crackly more. Uh, and obviously, if the roller's not rolling, then you're just more squeegeeing paint, which is also no good. But that's the final look. Uh, we're going to start wheeling stuff into it soon. And that's the whole job. That's rust board for the concrete floor. This was 32 by 24. We went through uh, about six gallons, six and a half gallons. I etched the floor. We washed it a number of times. Powell washed it. The floor is obviously a rough floor. And in areas where we etched it, I hope nobody's getting sick through this. Uh, in areas where we etched it, obviously it still looks etched. Uh, another user had commented, somebody along the way who installed it said, it doesn't fill tiny cracks, thought it might. So I thought, hey, maybe it'll just work out that it does fill my tiny cracks. It does not. So that's not really a fault of the product, uh, just my own laziness in not doing the cracks. They were tiny cracks, so they were tough to repair. All in all, it seems pretty durable. We'll see in a, a year.